This tutorial is a first steps introduction to DesignSpot PCB, showing the key steps to create a schematic diagram and translate it to a printed circuit board. Create a new project. From the menu bar, select File, then New. In the window, select Project and click OK. We are now prompted to enter a project file name and folder. Having created our project, we now add a schematic sheet. Select File from the menu bar, then New. And in the window, check that schematic design with the default template are selected. You must now tick the checkbox Add to Open Project, then OK. You are now prompted to enter a schematic file name and folder. It is suggested that these are the same as the project name and folder. Our schematic is now ready with all the default template settings. However, you may wish to customise the grid settings to your preferences, as shown, or they can be left as they are. We will get all our components from Model Source. Click the button at the bottom of the screen to launch the pop-out window. This automatically hides as you move the mouse away from the window. You can also launch Model Source from the menu bar under View or use the Ctrl plus M shortcut. Launch Model Source and we will select and load the resistors. In the selection boxes choose Passive Components, Fixed Resistors, Through Hole Fixed Resistors. The results table is now populated. If this is not visible or you wish to see more of the results, Drag the window upwards. We can now use the selection boxes to home in on our required part. First I select Axial Lead Parts, then the actual component value, 470k ohms. And we have 18 products to choose from. Refining this, I select a power rating of 0.4 watts and now have three components to choose from. I select the SFR25 series part from BC Components by clicking on the entry to highlight it. Then to preview the part I click the load preview button. Now I see the schematic and footprint symbols plus a list of the key features. Should I require the manufacturer's data, selecting the view data sheets button takes me to the RS Components website with links to data sheets and full product information. However, this is the part I require, so I click the Use Component button. This action has downloaded the symbols into the local library and the part is ready to use. Simply click and drag the schematic symbol to our sheet and you will see R1 placed. Back to Model Source, we can pin this to keep it open and select the remaining parts. Again, I select BC Components SFR25 series and a 4.7k value. We then follow the same steps. Select, load preview and use component. This time we are informed the symbols already exist in our library, so I just select no for the overwrite options. Dragging the symbol to our schematic sheet automatically increases the component reference to R2 and repeating this a second time we get R3, making the whole process quick and efficient. After adding R4 we then add our capacitors. Simply select Passive Components, Capacitors, Ceramic Multilayer Capacitors. Again we have many selection criteria available but I select through hole mounting type and the capacitance. From the list I select one and follow the steps. Load preview, use component and drag it to my schematic sheet and then repeat for the 100 microfarad part. For the op amp I will show a different selection method and enter UA741 in the quick search box. Looking at the first part in the list is a surface mount part. 
However, the CP suffix part is dual in line through whole package, so we use that. With our schematic parts complete, we unpin model source. The first observation is the line grid for this task is not very pleasing to the eye, so I simply set this back to the dot grid. On the schematic, I now arrange the symbols to roughly follow our diagram sketch. This is done by selecting the symbol and dragging to the new location. Rotation is achieved by using the shortcut key R while the part is highlighted, i.e. selected. Should you accidentally select just text, as I demonstrate with R4, simply use the undo button. With the components in the approximate positions, I note that the text is not as I require. Launch the interaction bar with the shortcut key F9, select the go to tab and the text styles. Clicking the first highlights the op amp text which is the size I require. Part style confirms the text size I wish to change. To edit these, launch the design technology window by the shortcut Shift plus T. Overtype the width and line width with our required values. You can also move text and the component designators as required. Now let's start placing our nets. First we see the feedback loop on the op amp between pins 2 and 6. Select the add schematic connection icon from the sidebar. Click on the cross at pin 2 and start placing the net. Click on any point to fix the net and change direction. Finally click on the destination pin and that is the net placed. Add the connection from R4 to that net. Ensure that the Add Schematic Connection icon is highlighted while in this mode. Press Escape or another task to exit this mode. Now repeat this process to place all the nets as shown. Note, in practice it is best to zoom in on an area to make this process easier. Just use the mouse scroll wheels or a shortcut key. Repeat this process to place all the nets as shown. For this design, I shall now show how to add a component from the library. We require three off, two pin connectors for the input, output and power. Select the add component icon, the default component library, and the component from the pull down list. You will then see the preview symbol. Click the add button and then place three components. Press escape to exit the command. Continue with your net wiring. Note the warning that is shown when joining two nets. Just click OK if it is intentional. For the component R2, I show how to edit the properties and not display the package or pin numbers. You can edit the net or components by selecting and moving to create your design. Now we can produce the PCB by using tools from the menu bar and selecting Translate to PCB. This opens the wizard and we use all the default settings.
The components then appear across the top of our empty PCB, connected by the rat's nest or air wires. Now select each component and drag to an approximate final position on the board. For more complex designs, it can be difficult to locate a specific component, so launch the interaction bar by the shortcut key F9, select the Go To tab and Components from the pull down menu. Now select a component reference. This becomes highlighted and centralised on the display so that you can easily select and place. Continue until all the components are placed. The interaction bar allows easy selection of nets. Once selected, right click and choose properties. You can now name the net and choose a class which defines the track width. You notice that the air wires cross and it is good practice to rotate and place components to minimise these crossovers as it will reduce the number of wires and simplify the PCB tracks. Here you see the steps. Select the component by a left mouse click. Use the shortcut key R to rotate and drag to a new position. Simply repeat as necessary to achieve your desired layout. You can also select multiple components by placing a selection box around them and drag and rotate as required. The PCB outline is now far too large and can be resized simply by selecting the edges of the board and dragging to a new position. Replace mounting holes as pads. and from their properties choose a pad width and a hole size. We can name this hole for future reference. We can then place a further three holes and use escape to exit. To place the holes in specific positions select a hole and set the relative origin at that item. Select the next hole and press the shortcut key equals to display the position. Make sure the REL box is checked to display the relative coordinates. Just over type an entry to reposition. Here I show how to access the auto router and the results we obtain. The details of auto routing will be covered in other tutorials. But I will now demonstrate manual routing. Unroute all the nets by selecting tools from the menu bar. We are now ready to manually add our own tracks. Select the add track icon from the sidebar. Click on the yellow air wire, not the pad and the track will be placed from the pin. This track has appeared on the top copper layer. Select it and press the shortcut key L to change the layer. Make sure the add track icon is selected and continue to place tracks. You'll notice how the track width match those defined for signal and power. Here you see our completed PCB tracking. 
we now perform a design rules check. We have two reported errors. These are both easy to see, but should your errors be less visible, launch the interaction bar and from the go to tab select errors. Clicking on any of the error coordinates centralizes and highlights the error for further editing. In this case, I simply make the bald area larger. To recheck the errors, open the design rules check, delete the errors, and check again. Success! No errors found. Here we see an air wire, but the PCB route is correct. To finalise such issues, right click and from the menu select Nets, and then Optimise Nets, and the view is corrected. We now have our PCB design completed. Finally, you can see a 3D view of your PCB by selecting 3D on the menu bar and then 3D view. This video has hopefully introduced you to the key steps in creating a schematic and PCB layout. There are many more tutorials available from the DesignSpark PCB homepage, which is accessible from the DesignSpark homepage. Thank you.